So basically today, what we have for today about the chapter, we'll be looking at uh, chapter six uh, of the book in Alpha Data Science. So the basic, uh, the learning objective in which I will be looking at today, we're looking at how to classify our data set as tidy, that is to be distinguishing between the tidy data set and also a non-tidy data set. So we look at some basic functions and how to pivot data to make it uh, to be a tidy data. We are also going to look at uh, functions uh, such as the separate and the unite uh, columns to make them more tidy. That is, we have to see when we have some data sets, how we can use uh, the separate function to separate uh, those data set that has variable into separate uh, columns. We also look at the unite functions. We are also going to look at how to deal with uh, missing values uh, from our data sets. We also look at uh, combine functions to tidy, a, to tidy a data set. We are also going to look at how to recognize reasons that non-tidy data might be preferred in some uh, in some cases. So the first part, uh, so I'll just go straight to the book because I did not prepare any slide here. Let me go straight. Okay. Can we see, the, I, I hope we are all seeing the book. Yes. Hello. Okay. So the book first of all starts uh, with this kind of uh, motivation that happy families are all alike. Every unhappy family is unhappy in its own way. And then this quote was from Leo uh, Dorsey. And also they def uh, hardly also define a tidy data set as uh, all alike, but every messy data set are messy in its own way. Because it was, kind of uh, defining a, a tidy data set uh, as a data in which every column will be a variable, every row is going to be an observation, and every cell is going to be a unique value in each cell. So this is what constitutes what we call tidy data. In my earlier talk, I said uh, after we have, we, I, I showed the data science uh, workflow where I explained the process of after data imports, we need to what, tidy it. But if our data set is not in a tidy format, there are tools uh, within the tidy R package in which we'll be using uh, to clean up our data set. So the book kind of like say, we have to first of all load our library, which is a tidy verse. And this is going to load the, the eight core packages that are in the tidy verse. But if you are using uh, the, uh, the development version of tidyverse that is on GitHub. If you load library tidyverse, you are going to have access to nine core packages because Lubridates is in the development version of tidyverse uh, that is on that has been deployed to GitHub. So the book kind of like give us an examples of uh, how a, a tidy data set look like. We have a data set here, table one. This data set is in the tidy R package. If you have loaded uh, the tidyverse, you'll have access to this data. So we have table one. Within this table one, we have a data set where we have country, we have year, we have cases, and what population. Within each row, we have observation for each country, Afghanistan, in the year 1999. The number of cases was reported, and also the population for Afghanistan for that year. So we if you go through also for other years, they do report similar observation for each country per year. So this is an example of what uh, the author was referring to as a tidy data. Because if you are looking at table, each is like uh, somebody, let me check, need to move. Additional, I think, team also your mic is on so that. So if you look at this table, if you look at this table, we have each column here, we have unique names. 
because we have country, we have year, we have cases and population. Each row, each row we are getting, we are having what observation because we have Afghanistan at the year 1999. We can see the number of cases. We can also get uh, the, the information about uh, the population because within each cell in that table, we are having observations. So this is what the author defined as a tidy data. So, but in normal case, majority of the data in which we receive, I think 90% of the majority of them, they, are, they will come in an untidy format. But there are tools in which we can use uh, to clean them up. So the author also give an example of another data set. Here we are having the column, country, year, type, and count. We are also having, uh, we are also having within the row, we have Afghanistan. At the year, we have 1999, the number of cases, and also the count, which is similar to what uh, we have in table one. But in table three, in table three, the example they gave in the book is another issue here. Here, we are having country, we are having year, but here they now match two information in one column. Two information is being placed in one column. So for us to do this, uh, we need to what, separate this in information into what? Into the number of, we need to separate it into the number of cases and also the counts. We need to separate this information because they now match two information in one column, but in subsequent section, when we start the demo, we will look at how to deal with this type of data set. Uh, table 4A here is the same thing, is similar here. We are having here. We are having here as a column because we need to have one unique column whereby we name that column the, the year. Then we, within each row, we arrange all the years in that way. So if you have, so in this case, in this case, we need to what? Collapse this. We need to put this in one column. We need to put this in one column. So that means uh, we need to pivot it in a longer format. We need to collapse this here, put it in one column. But we'll look at that. And um, table 4B is the same issue here. We are also having here the same issue. So near the author, he did explain. Each variable in a column is a variable. Just as I said earlier, because we are having country, we are having year, we are having count, we are having population. Then each observation in, in row and each row, each observation forms a row and each row is an, an, an observation. So the value within each cell, that is what is going to give us uh, the table because they are saying each variable here we are having country, we are having year, we are having cases, we are having population. So when we look at the observation, the observation spread across uh, the rows. Then, then when we when we come down here, we are having values. So we are having Afghanistan, we have a unique value. We have uh, the year, we are going to have unique year, the number of cases, and and also population. So here, the book, uh, they want to they give a, an example of the first instance for table one, which is what we have here for, for table one. So for table one, okay, they, they use a mutate function, which is from the Dipla package. So here, they want to create a new column that is rates. So for, for them to create that column, they did some transformation whereby they said cases, which is this column, divided by population, multiply uh, by 10,000. So if you do that, you are going to create a new, add a new column to the data frame. So let me quickly grab this and let's see how that, let me share my house studio. So first of all, they say the library, tidyverse. So I paste this here. 
As I said earlier, table one data set is a data that is from the tidy R package, which is what we have here. So we are having, and within this data, we are having cases, which is this column. We are having population, which is this column. They now said cases divided by population, then multiply by 10,000 to give us the rates. So when we run that, when we run this, so we just create a new column. We just added a new column to the data set. Any, I hope I, everything is clear up to this point. Okay. Yes. So let me go back to the notes. So that is how they arrive here at the rates column. I think uh, table one also is similar to what I did there. Yeah, they're having table, the same table one. They are, they are using the count uh, function from the Dipler package. So yeah, they say counts every year. So it's going to count every year and return the value here. Then here they use weight is equals to what? Cases. So this is going to give us all the unique, all the counts for all the cases. So it's going to give us their exact weight. But if you say counts equals year and cases, so it's going to count all the cases and it's also going to put at the number of counts at the end. But when you say weight is equals to cases, our result is going to be different. Let's see that example. Let's see that example. The same table one. Okay. So here we said weights. This is what they did in the book. So we also have the same table one. And then counts. When we say this way, we are we are going to have a different result. We are going to have a different result. So if you say cases, counts, year and cases. So it's going to say year, we're having year 1999, we're having year 1999, 1999. These are all the, all the cases that fall here, cases that belong to this group, then it's going to put all the counts there. But if you say WT, that is the weight of all the cases. So you are going to collapse everything down, you are going to get a different result. So it's going to collapse all this, the weight. It's going to sum all these three weights and put the value here. It's going to collapse all this and put the value here. So it's, we are going to get a different result. Share my boots. Okay, yeah, they were trying to look at uh, the same example from the table one. The same example from table one. So they did just a simple visualization from ggplot2. Uh, in this, I'm sorry, I hope, sorry. In this example, what they did here, they said, they said the data set is going to be table one. Then within the aesthetics, because within the aesthetics, we are linking variable that, in the, that I, from the data set into what the visual is, properties of the graph. So yeah, they put the year in the X axis. They map cases to the Y axis. Cases was mapped to the Y axis, then plus, which is the pipe in ggplot2. The plus sign is just like a pipe in deep layer. The plus sign in ggplot2, we are using it to add layers. So we use a plus to add a new layer, which is job line, then aesthetics, then they say the group, by country. So this is going to place uh, the legends, then the color, they use a uh, gray 50 to color the line. So they, they use gray 50, the line will be uh, color white with gray 50. Then they add a new layer for the points, which is going to show these points in the plots. Then aesthetics color is equals to country. So each point will have a, will have a unique color as a country. Then the shape, should be equals to country so that each country will have different shape in the graph. Then they, they simply go into a, the scale. 
Then they, within the scale X continuous, they set the breaks. So they break the, the X axis that they start from 1999 to 2000. So if you grab this code and just place, run it. So you are going to, this is the default graph in which they, you, you are going to get. Uh, for the exercises, I will just skip the exercise because I will skip the exercise for now, but if there are any question, I will come back to that. So yeah, we want to go into, uh, we want to look at how we can use the pivot function in how to collapse uh, our data set into, to, to collapse our data set from a wide to a long format. So this is an example of an untidy data set. Okay, this is an example of an untidy data set. Because if you look at it, we are having artists, we are having track, we have, have having the dates that the track entered, we, we are having week one, week two, week three, week four, week five, and up to I think week uh, 70 something and so. So we want to see how we can collapse this week into just one column. And that column, we are going to name that column as week. Then we are going to have another column that is going to pull the value. So let's see that. Grab this and share my R Studio billboard. Billboard data set is a data from the tidy R package. So we have billboard. So this is a billboard data set. Let me remove. Okay, this is the billboard data set. So what we want to do, we want to collapse this column. Okay, so what we are, I'll do, I use my pipe and then I say pivot longer because pivot longer function is a function from the tidy R package. We use it to collapse multiple columns down into rows. So in that case, we are going to increase the number of rows and thereby decreasing the number of columns. That is what the pivot longer function is going to do. So the first thing we do is that we say cause course, uh, here we are going to select the columns in which we want to collapse. So, but here I want to use the helper function from the tidy R because by right, I was supposed to say course, I put within the, I create a vector. I create a vector where I say from, I think what I want to select is from week one to week, uh, I don't know where the week, the week, or let me just say, let me use a straight. I don't know where the week starts. Let me use the helper function first. Start, start with week. Okay. So here yeah, I want to select all the column. I want to use a helper function from the tidy R. I want to select all the column that starts with this week. If you look at the data sets, you can look at it here. This is week, this is week, this is week, this is week. I want to check for all those columns that meet this pattern. So if I run that, okay, if I run that, you can see what it did. It, it picked all those columns that start with week and drop them in one column. It's saying this is week one, this is week two, this is week three, and also week 10, there are still other week there. So the next thing I'm to do there is to say names to. Names to argument is what are the columns, the names that are coming from those multiple columns. Which, what is the name you want to give to that column? So here I say names to week. I give it to week. Okay, then the values. I think there are values to. Uh, value store, let's just say is count. So when I run that, you can see what we have. We are having week, week one, week two, week three, week four, but there are some other information here containing missing data. So, but in order for us to remove this missing data from our data sets, so what we have to do is the values, there is a values, underscore drop, underscore NA. 
okay, when you set that to true, it's going to remove the missing data. Any question up to this extent? Are there any question up to this question before I proceed? Hello, Christine? No, I, we do not have. Uh, no question. Okay. No question. No question. Okay, so when we do that, values underscore drop underscore NA, we are going to drop all the missing data we can see here. There are no missing data in this data set. So, so, so that is just uh, the trick. And also, if, if, if you do not want to keep the week, if you do not want the week to appear, if you just want week, it should just be one, two, three, four, and so on. If you want to be in that case, another approach for us to do, there is a function uh, names transform, names prefix, yeah. Names prefix, we can pass this function. If you do not want, to, there is also an alternative. We can also use the read R package, the pass underscore number function. So when we put this, it's going to remove all those weak and just put in the weak column, it's going to be with one, two, three, four, five, six. Okay. So, but if you do not want to use that approach, I can just copy this, paste here, remove this. This is what we have before. We are having week one, two, three. So I can just pass this to a mutate function, mutate to create a new column. Let's say week uh, two. So here we have using read, the read R, which is also pass, pass underscore number function from the reader. So another alternative to solve that problem, then we just pass week in. Still going to do, it's still going to do the same thing. You can see it here. You can see it here. The week two, we have it still having one, two, three, four, five, six. Which if you run this other line, if we run this other line, it's still the same thing. So let me go back to the notes. Let me go back to the notes. I think, yeah. Okay, that is the same thing they did here. I think that is the same example they did here where they say billboards, they use five or longer, cause they select the color. Here they are using the study select function starts with a uh, week. Then they say names to week and values to what rank. Okay, when you run that, uh, this is the outputs. They have, but they have some missing data here. So in order for you to remove that missing data, so we need to use values drop NH, set it to true. It's going to get rid of all those missing data uh, in our data frame. So they have a similar example here, billboard tidy, billboard, five or longer, uh, is the same thing, is the same thing. Okay, yeah, there were, the book, uh, they were give an example here, using the billboard tidy data set that they created uh, in this pipeline here, they use the same billboard data sets, uh, they, I just did a brief uh, plot uh, using ggplot whereby they map week to the x-axis, rank to the y-axis, then they group, they group the line uh, by the number of track in which we have, then they set geom line, then the alpha, the alpha which is to control the transparency. So they set alpha to be one over three, then the y-axis scale, they just reverse they just reverse at the y-axis scale. That is, they use the scale y reverse function, which is going to reverse this, place it in the reverse order. We are now having zero at the top and 100 uh, at the bottom. So I hear you. If, hello? 
you can't hear me no i can okay okay it's just that there's little bit of echo okay what are they, are they trying to do here this okay here they just create a demo data frame which is a triple which is also a row wise data frame okay they use a triple there they said they, they, they call it the df the data frame then they pipe it into a pivot function then they select the first two column which is column one and column two from here then they say names to names values to values so we are going to get our data frame back is the same thing as the df1 is the same thing here in which they explain is the same thing okay so this one is another example they give in the book in this case let me go back to our studio so that we can see this clearly go back so place this and then and then let's view it. Sorry. Uh, oh, they did not commit is wall at two, nothing like that. So we can see this data set. Here we have in country. We are having ISO2, ISO3, we are having here, for here, this is the tuberculosis cases. We are having new underscore SP underscore M014. These are all what we have in this data set. So what they want to do is that they want to separate this into what three column. They want to use the separate function from the tidy out to pull this column pull this into a separate column. But before we can achieve that, we need to note the separator. We need to note the separator because in this case, uh, the separator is the underscore. We need to know what is the separator in the data set. And the separator, what separates each of those uh, variable is the underscore because we need to know that, note that before we can go into uh, applying the two. So the separator is an underscore. So let's see what they were trying to explain in the book. So the separator is an underscore. So what they did there is that they set, selected all the column except country to year. They omit country to year. They selected every other column except this column because then they negate this column. Okay, they selected all the column they negated this to this column from country uh, to year. Then they now set the names. The names will now be diagnosis, gender, and also age. So they they set the they, they set the names to be diagnosis. It should be gender and also the age. Then the name set. The name set is where we define uh, the separator for that data frame. So what is separating those data frame? is what underscore, because this is very important uh, so that I will know that, okay, what is separating each of these is an underscore. So go and look for that pattern where we find underscore, split them into what, three column. Then they now said values to, the values is going to be, uh, the values is going to, the values is going to count. So if we do that, if we run that, we are going to get this, three new column back and also the count. We are going to have these three new column back and also the count. But we are also getting some a bunch of NA here in which we can also drop those NA just like the previous example I did. We can also drop those NA. So that, that is another trick. So they always selected all the column except uh, country to yes. That is why we are having country here they did not select those columns. So what did they do to those columns? They separate all those columns they select, selected into uh, three columns. So we're having diagnosis, 
we have in gender, we have in age, then the values to what count. So I will just go and look for those patterns and it's going to arrange uh, your data sets in that order. So this is uh, similar to what I just showed there where we are having variable A, B, C. Here we are having X underscore one, we are having Y underscore two. So here the, you can separate this column. We can, uh, we can separate this column into, uh, into name. Name will now be X, Y, X, Y, X, Y and also number, we can separate it into name and number. So here will now be one, two, one, two, one, two. Then this other column will hold the value, which is the same thing we did here. It's the same thing we did here. So, and this column will hold the value. It's the same example they did here, but here they are using a uh, visual form. So we move from here to, to here. Okay. Um, yeah, what's data, data and variable names in column headers? Okay, it's similar issue. Here we are having data and variable names as column headers. We still use the same approach to clean it up. We still use the same approach to clean it up. So we still use household, which is the data set. So we do a pivot longer function. We selected the column by negating family, we select all the column except family. Then we said names to dot value and child. This is slightly different because this one is of us to say values to, we are overwriting that values to argument. Within the names to, we are calling the dot value. So it's of we to say values to, we are now overwriting that values to argument. But here we, they use dot value and they also call child. So, and here they, they, they pass in the separator because this, this is slightly uh, tricky. When I first started, when I first used this function, I, I think at times I used to be confused with this function because here we are having names too. They now say dot value. They are not using values too in this case. Instead of them to use, they just say dot value and child. Then name set, but you specify the separator. There is also names pattern but we will come to that. So here we specify that the separator is still an underscore because if you look at this table, this what is separating those columns is underscore. If you look at it, it's underscore. So uh, in the name set, they put the underscore, then values underscore drop underscore any, they set it to be true. So if there will be any any in that case, is R is going to understand those any is going to omit those any. And then they mutate, they create a new column called child. In that column called child, they are using this function pass underscore number, which is coming from the read R package. Then they pass in the child. So if they pass in that child, it's going to drop any pattern. Pass underscore number, let's see what the function is doing is, I think it's going to return, it's going to drop any string we have in and it's going to return the number, let's see that. Uh, let's see that, read, read R, pass, pass underscore number. Let's see that. So this is the documentation. Pass underscore number flexibly. This drops any non-numeric character before or after the first number. The grouping mark specified by the locale is ignored. So any anything that is not number and you want to easily drop it from your from your data frame, you can use this function pass underscore number from from the readout package. Just pass it. So it's going to drop anything that is not number and return only numerics. Okay. So I think this, this, this is the same thing, is the same example they are trying to explain here with this bit, is the same example. So yeah, we are looking at widening the data sets. We have seen example of five or longer is to collapse multiple column into 
rows. So pivo longer word is collapsing those columns into rows and it's going to increase the number of rows. Why pivo uh, wider is doing the opposite. It's, uh, it's spreading out multiple rows into columns. So in pivo wider is going to increase the number of columns, decrease uh, the number of rows. Before now, before the pivot function, there was what uh, the entire R, they used to be gather and spread. They used to be gather and spread before now, but gather and spread is still there, but they are no longer maintaining it, but they only fix for because it's the syntax is not always clear. When should I use gather? When should I use spread? That is why they have to rename it pivot longer and pivot wider, which is more intuitive so that you know when to use pivot longer, you know when to use pivot wider. So pivot wider is just to spread those, multi, those rows into multiple columns. It's the opposite of pivot longer. So here they have a data set called CMS patient experience. So in this CMS patient experience, uh, they, want to, they want to spread an observation. They, they want to spread this, they check for they use the distinct function. This function, I think, distinct, yeah, is coming from the deeper. They check for the not the, the unique measured ID and also the unique title. They want to check for only the unique. They want to return only those unique value. So once they return that, they also call the function here CM patient experience. Then they want to spread. They use pivot wider. Then Within the pivot wider, you need to pass two arguments. You need to tell the, the function where the names is coming from. We need to also tell, tell the function where the values is coming from. Those two arguments, they are very, very, very important. Why? In the pivot longer, we said names too and values too. Why the opposite in this case, we are saying names, names from. Where is the names coming from? And also where is the values coming from? So here, yeah, the names is coming from measured CD. If you come up here, we have measured CD. The names is coming from this column, the first column, okay? So where is the values coming from? The values from preferred pre preference date rates. So there's, a, there's another column here, but I can't show it. I can't show it because I'm not sure if this data set they have included it in the package. So when we have that, when we have that, so if we run that, we can see that they have spread those columns. They spread it into, they spread all those rows into multiple columns. So it's going to have unique column. They spread it into a different column. So let's just see one example with what we have already. Let's see one example. So we work with this billboard. Let's say this billboard. Let me use this. Billboard. Billboard long. Okay. So let's check the head. Bill, billboard long. So this is the head of the billboard long, okay? This is the head of the billboard long. I think there is something in the chart, let's see. Okay, okay, there is no problem. Okay, this is billboard long. So this is billboard long. We are having week, we are having counts, date entered, we are having artists, we are also having a uh, track. So now I want to return it back to the original format in which we have. So I will say bill, billboard long. And then the next thing I said is pivot, pivot wider. So here we when we when we are in the function just you hit your tab key to assess all the function. So we said, where is the names coming from? The names should come from, uh, 
which one should I use? I want, uh, let me remove this so that I don't want it. Which one? Yeah, let me remove this first. Check the head again. Yeah, let me remove that. So the names is coming from where? I said it's weak. So where is the values coming from? We have to say values, values from, is here, values from, is coming from counts. Values from counts. So when we run this, uh, In a five or longer. Wait, wait. I am missing something. Names from week. Values from accounts. Yeah. This is the default data set we have. So I use the function pivot long, pivot wider. I say names from. We move from here. This is where we were coming from. We are coming from here. I say names from. All the names that were coming from this column called week. We are having week one, we are having week two, we are having week three, we are having week four, we are having week five. I, want, I spread this column. I spread these rows into a multiple column. Then I now tell the function, where should we get the value from? Then I say, pick the value from counts. So it's going to pick all the values from counts and place it at week one. What is the number of counts? It is 87, week two is 82. So if you now run that, you are going to, sorry, could not find. Uh -uh. Sorry, names, uh, names from. Oh, sorry. Okay, so week one is going to put the value there. It is seven, week two, 82, week three, 72, week four, 77 in that order. So it's going to spread them up. So, which is very, very uh, useful. So let's go back to the notes again and check what we have. Uh, what's again, this, this, this is the same thing, is the same thing. Cause they said five or longer. Yeah, the only, the only difference is that they specify the ID column. So, this, they just specify the ID column should be all column that starts, that belong, that has the ORG, that is the organization, they use it to be the ID column. Okay, if you have an ID column you want to use, you can pass it to the column function, it's going to do it then, they now say names, names from, measure CD, values from, preferred, uh, preference rate, so it's going to place it's going to make sure you number it by that column. It's going to be one, two, three, four, five. Those are, it's going to be the row ID. So here they were saying, how does pivot wider work? To understand pivot wider work, how it works, let's again, let's again start with a simple data set. So they create a simple demo data set with a triple, which is a, a row wise data frame. Then the, the columns, we, they have an ID, they are having the name, they are also having value. So within this, they have, for ID, we have ID A, B, A, B, B, A, A. Then for the name, we are having X, Y, X, Y, and also Z. Then for the value, we are, they are having one, two, three, four, five. Okay, so in that case, they said the DF, which is a data frame that we created above, they said five out wider names from name. So it's going to pick all the name from this name, which is X, Y, 
x, y, and also z. Names from name, then values from value. It's going to pick all the unique value there. Then it's going to spread everything. It's going to spread out uh, the column in a wide format. So the, as I said earlier, the pivot wider, it increases the number of column. In pivot wider, it increases the number of column. Why pivot longer increases the number of rows. So once you know that concept, it becomes uh, very easy for you to understand. Pivot wider, we are increasing, lengthening the number of columns. Pivot longer, we are increasing the number of rows. So what again? Here yeah, they are, were trying to do, they said DF and then distinct. They count all the distinct name. So it's going to be X, Y and Z because that is what we have in DF. That is, those are the three names we have in DS, DF. So yeah, they, did, they, they selected every column except these two, these two columns, they do not select them. Select everything. So in that case, what would they select? Let's look at DF. So it's going to be ID. It's going to be ID column. So, and they just said this thing. So how many ID do they have? They just have two ID. They have just two ID, A and B. So they now said pivot wider, then combine this result to generate a empty data frame. So how does that work? They say we have DF, they select the ID column by negating these two column and then they count the number of distinct, then they mutate X is equals to NA, Y is equals to NA and also Z is equals to NA. So it's going to say where we have X, place all missing, Y, everything missing and Z, everything what missing. This is another example. It's also a row wise table similar to what I explained, where they're having ID, they're having name, they're having value. They use the same pivot wider, which is going to increase uh, the number of columns and decrease the number of rows. Okay, so yeah, in this case here, yeah, they were, they move further on in the book, whereby they have DF, then they group by, they group by just these two columns, the ID and also the name. And then they pass, they pipe it into a summarized function. Within the summarized function, they look for all the counts. They are looking for all the counts of the ID and also the name. Then the dot group is equals to what drop. So it's going to do the summary statistics. It's going to, then at the end of the day, we drop the group because it's always useful after doing group by, you do summary statistics, always good uh, so that for you to be consistent to drop, to ungroup your data set so that you just get your final outputs. Then they now filter where all the N is equals to uh, one, where all the N is equals to one L. That is, that is above, I think this is gonna be above uh, one, where all the counts, we are both one. So they have how many counts? They're just, just two counts. What is the untidy data? So here, yeah, the, the book, they were talking about uh, a untidy data set, which is always a, a messy data set. So, and we have seen that, uh, an example of untidy data set is data set in which we are having both the variables and values, they are spread in the columns. So if you have it in that case, uh, we can say that that such data is not uh, a tidy data set. So we need to tidy it up because if we have a tidy data set, it becomes very easy for us to, to do our modeling. It becomes very easy for us to visualize those data sets. If we have data that is in tidy format, it becomes very easy for us to work uh, with the tidy verse because the principles and the philosophy of the tidy verse is that it's built around is built around what we call tidy data. If you want to really enjoy the syntax of tidy verse, I think the main philosophy, the main idea is around the idea of tidy data. So here they have an example of a diamond 
data sets. I think this data set is in ggplot2, yes. So they, they are doing a count of all the clarity and color. So it's going to give us all the counts. It's going to give us all the counts. And the same thing here, they do counts for clarity and color. Then they pivot wider. They want to spread. They want to spread out all the color names from color. So all the name is coming from the color. Then values is coming from where the values is coming from counts, from the counts in which we created. The values is coming from this column called counts. They want to spread out this color into multiple column. So they spread out the color where they're having color D, color E, color F, color G, H, I, and J. Then the values, they place the values there, which is coming from the counts. A facet grid, multiple statistics. Yeah, this is an example from library Gapminder. We have to load the library first. You need to install the Gapminder before you can. After we install it, it's a package that is that is on CRAN. We have to install this package. Then we load the library Gapminder. Then they said Gapminder. They pipe it into a mutate function. So within the mutate, they were trying to look for GDP per capita whereby they did a log transformation of the GDP per capita. Then they did a what, pivot wider. Then the ID calls. So the ID columns is coming from what the country. We want to put the country as the ID column. Then the names from, the names is coming from all the year and the values is coming from the GDP per capita. We can now see in 1952, what is the GDP per capita for each country? In 1957, we can see the GDP per capita for each country. To so this stage, are there any questions before I can proceed? Because I'm, I am almost, any question? Okay, in case of none, I, I, I will just proceed. So yeah. They use call year, the call year, which is a data frame which we have created here. Okay, we have a call year there in the example. Then they said, and then they say column to row names. The column to row names function is coming from the table package in R, columns to row names. Then this is the variable they want to pass to the row name, yes. Go ahead with your question. Hello? Additional, I, I thought you have a question. Okay, so columns uh -huh. to row name function. Columns to row names, I say it's coming from the from the table package, so the variable is that they just pass in the country. So it's going to make sure that column called country is now going to be the row names. Look at them here. Afghanistan is no longer a column header. What do they have? I think this they were trying to do. What is cluster? Yeah, uh, they, they did some cluster analysis from the stats package. They use the k-means function. Then column per year, then the number of centers, the center is by six. So when they run this, they save it in an object called cluster. And they call that cluster and then cluster and then they frame it. I think the frame function is coming, yeah, it's coming from the tidy R. The, the frame is going to make sure it becomes a data frame. There is also a deframe function, which is going to split it to, into a, a, a list. There is an inframe. Let's see what that function is doing. Let me check the documentation. And frame. Let's see what it's doing. Okay, so the frame function is coming, is coming, uh, sorry, is from the table. 
the frame, I know the D frame is coming from the tidy area. So in frame converts name atomic vector or list to one or two column data frames. You convert them back to a data frame. Okay. So they use the frame function and then they rename, they rename the name should not be what country. Then the, the value should not be what the cluster ID. So we're now having country and also cluster ID. So what did they did there? They, they did some gap minder and then the left join by the word cluster ID. Then they join this back into the data frame, they, they join it back. So they join by this column called cluster ID. So it's going to check for, it's going to check for where there is, uh, it's going to, this is the left join. So it's going to retain all the data set that we have, we find in the Gapminder data set, but it's going to look for where we have matches in those rows, where they match with this is going to return only those value. It's going to retain this and only check for matches in cluster ID and retain all those information in the final outputs. So here they went for that into the deep CMS patient experience. We have defined that above, then the group by organization, then they did some summary, then the number of missing, then they use the sum is dot na. So this sum is dot na is going to check are they missing data? Is going to return. Is going to check for missing data. So we can see the number of missing data for this is zero. This is zero. This observation has one observation with missing data. Others they were all zero. Then this is going to return the counts. This function places the counts here. is CMS patient care, okay, so that I sub wrap it up here. It's the same thing, the, the same data frame, they use pivot wider, they want to, the names is coming from the type, values is from score, then they did uh, mutate to create a new column. Then they say numerator is first to what round, observe all over 100 times denominator. So it's going to create, a new column called numerator, which is what we have here. What, uh, let's see. I think this is the same thing, is the same thing. They only, uh, what they only added here is just the visualization. They only did the visualization. Then they use code equal to place uh, the coordinates uh, system. I think that is all for the chapter. I don't know if uh, there are any questions or any further inputs. That is what I got from the chapter. Any question or any inputs? Let's see, I think, do you have any inputs, contribution? That is what we have. Covered it again. Apologies, I messed up the date. Um, I thought it was the coming Monday, not this Monday. Okay. Okay. So, and also, I think I would like to before we call, wrap call it a day. I think there was a message from John. It was like asking because of the daylight saving time. Either we were, he said, either we should discuss, either we skip a week off. That is at the end of October. Either we'll skip one week. I don't know. He said I should discuss with the group. What is your opinion, or are you okay with the schedule? What what are you thinking of doing with the time then? Because the clock, you know, as the clocks change, do we sort of stick with like the time? Either because of the daylight saving time, uh, for us to keep in pace with it, either we skip the clock for like uh, one week or so, 
he said that we I should, but, it's, but though he said I should, we should discuss it in the, with the group. Yes, yeah, so I don't quite understand this because at the moment it's like for me here it's five o'clock, but then when the clocks go yes. forwards. But if we are okay with the schedule, everything still remains, everything will still remain the same. If the entire group is okay with the schedule that way, yeah. we'll keep on meeting. Is the schedule okay? Yes, sir. Yeah. Okay. It's okay with most of us. Okay, there is no issue. So that means we will still skip, we we'll still stick to our schedule. So we'll meet at uh, the same time. We we'll meet the same time. I think next week uh, is Christine. I think she is not online. She will be the one presenting at uh, workflow. That is a code start. She will be she will be the one presenting next week uh, Monday. So we we'll meet next week Monday. Thank you all. Thank you very much. Thank you. Goodbye. Thank you. Okay. Bye bye.